This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Story, I don't know of a better story in the Bible, reveals that, how God thinks about us. Let's take a look at the story of the adulterous woman. Early in the morning, he came to the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down, and he taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and he said to him, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw the stone at her. Once more, he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was soon left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. From now on, sin no more. Many people have the idea that God is this angry, judgmental, harsh, mean God. And nothing could be further from the truth. I want us to take a look at this story and draw some truths that are literally life transforming. And I want you to understand that you are that person, the adulterous woman. You are that person. There's something in your life that caused, uh, that violated, that broke God's heart. And how does God respond to you? And how do people around you respond? This is one of the most amazing truths. And I want us to take a look at this issue of condemnation. Because we all live by it or suffer by it. It's one of the most amazing truths that we have to learn from this story. And that is that condemnation does not come from God. Did you get that in the story? Condemnation does not come from God. In fact, Jesus condemned only one thing in his entire ministry, religious bigotry. Matthew chapter 12 says it this way, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, favorite scenes. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and he says, you brood of vipers. 
That was about as insulting as you could get back in those days. That was almost like cussing. You know, it was just so insulting. It was just, you guys are, you're not snakes, you're sons of snakes. You're, you're the brood of vipers. You are so disgusting. How can you speak good when you're evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So he's saying there's no way you can speak good because your heart is evil. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That's pretty harsh to say (laughs) to the religious leader. Can you imagine going up and saying that to some pastors? I can. I'd like to say it to a few pastors. I'd like to say it to a few Bible teachers. I'd like to say it to a few Bible or church leaders. It's important for us to understand that religious bigotry is a violation. It's the one thing that Jesus condemned. It was amazing. And if we live by it, we are in danger of discipline. In fact, we are under discipline, I think. Jesus always made it clear that it is the individual's action that actually reveals their condemnation. In other words, one isn't going to be condemned. You're already condemned because of sin. In other words, it is sin that condemns one. Jesus said, I'm not going to condemn you because you're already condemned. Your sin has already condemned you. If you have violated God's purpose and plan for your life, if you have broken God's will, you have condemned yourself. You are already condemned. You are not going to be condemned. You are condemned. The condemnation of the adulterous woman actually came from two sources. Number one, her sin. She was a sinner. No, there's no question. There's no, she didn't say, I didn't do it. She, she apparently was caught in the act. There's no question that she was an adulterous woman. She knew her sin. And so her sin condemned her. She was condemned. But then there were the self-righteous, sinful religious people around her who also thought it was important to condemn her. This is one of the biggest failures, I believe, of the church and of many people who aren't in the church who claim to be Christians. We've confused righteousness with condemnation. We think that, oh, we're so righteous, we're so holy, that gives us the right to go out and condemn people. Where did we, where did we learn that? Because it's just not in the Bible. Where does it say in the Bible that it is our responsibility to point out the sin of the world? Who made us God? Who made us the Holy Spirit? You see, it, the Holy Spirit's job is conviction. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not the work of God's people. That's the Holy Spirit's job, to bring conviction. In fact, in John 16, 8, when Jesus was explaining what the Holy Spirit would do, that's in John 16. In John 16, 8, it says this about the Holy Spirit. When He comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what He does. He is the one who convicts of sin. Now, as Christians, the Bible tells us that we are to hold each other accountable in love. We're to hold each other accountable. But that's between believers. That is not between us and the world. It is not our job to convict the world. It is not our job to go out and point out the world's sin. And it happens among all kinds of Christian groups. My heart bleeds over this when I see Christians who get caught up in this idea of pointing fingers at people and condemning people for their sin in the world. Shut up. It's not your job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. Your job is to act like Jesus. And how did Jesus act? Look at the story of the adulterous woman. Let's look at Jesus' approach. One of the key principles in the Word of God is the principle of freedom from condemnation for sin. And it's taught in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, where it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You are not condemned. You are not condemned if you are in Christ Jesus. Now listen to me. If you are not condemned because you are in Christ Jesus, you have no right to condemn. Those who are not condemned may not condemn. There is no greater example of that than what Jesus did there in, there in, in John chapter 8. Jesus stood up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? All the people that were going to stone her to death. Where are they? Has, has, has no one condemned you? Has, has anybody condemned you, in other words? And she said, No one, Lord. And he said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, Jesus was not and is not about condemning people, he's about setting them free. That's what Jesus did. In fact, he said it over and over and over again. You know, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I'm here to set you free. I'm here to set the prisoner free. It was all about freedom. That's what he wanted to do, was set people free. Notice that it was in that non-condemning heart of Jesus that she recognized who he was. Lord. Do you see that? She said, he said, does anybody condemn you? And she said, no one Lord, she recognized who he was because of his non-condemning spirit. If we're going to reach the world for Christ, we're going to have to carry it on in that same or with that same heart. If we're going to touch the world and change the world in the name of Jesus Christ, we have to do it the way Jesus did it, without a condemning heart. A heart of no condemnation. It's then, I believe, that the world will begin to see who Jesus really is, the one who sets us free from the condemnation of sin. That it is not us who condemns them, it is their sin that condemns them. Jesus never condemned the woman at the well. Remember that? When he went to get a drink of water, we studied that some time ago. And he asked her, you know, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your husband. Where is your husband? And she said, well, I don't have a husband I've been I've had five of them and and or she didn't say that she said I have no husband and Jesus said I know that you've had five of them and the guy you're living with now is not your husband he didn't condemn her he just revealed her revealed herself to herself he didn't condemn the woman at the well for her lifestyle he didn't condemn this adulterous woman Study the life of Jesus, and you'll notice he never even condemned Judas for betraying him. And he didn't condemn the two thieves that were hung on either side of the cross. In fact, Jesus made it clear from the beginning of his ministry what he was all about. It's in John chapter 3 when he was confronting Nicodemus. Remember Nicodemus stood up and defended him? We saw that in the passage. This is when he was talking to Nicodemus, and he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only son of God. Listen, people know their sin. The adulterous woman knew knew her sin. She knew her sin. She didn't need to be told. She knew her sin. People know their sin, and if they don't, it's the Holy Spirit's job to reveal that to them. I really do believe that there are an awful lot of people, even Christians, who who are dealing with some sin in their life, and they may not even understand or know that it's a sin, that it's something that's displeasing to God. Well, that's God's job to reveal that to them, you know? It's not my job to go up and say, oh, by the way, you know, the way you're wearing your hair is offensive to God and to me. You know, the fact that you're showing elbows from the way you dress is offensive to me, or to God, I mean to God. (laughs) It's not my job to go and tell somebody, "That's that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That really is the work of the Holy Spirit. 
I want you to know that I, and I, I've, I've made this, this vow before God, and I, and I intend to keep it. It's, not, it's nothing to be arrogant about. It's just the way I believe God wants me to live my life. I will never condemn you for your sin. I'm just not going to. It's not my job. It's not my job to condemn you. And besides, I have too many other things to condemn. Starting with myself. (laughs) It's not my job to condemn you, and I'm not going to condemn you for your sin. I don't have that right or that responsibility, thank goodness. So you're around me, you're okay. You got to be careful around Patterson. (laughs) But around me, you're safe. I'm not going to condemn you for your sin because it's not my job. But listen, that's the way we're to live our lives. And we're to live our lives that way at work. Let me, let me guess. There are people at work that aren't Christians who have some pretty vile, filthy ways of living their life. Am I right? Shake your head north to south. And don't you just want to grab them and say, you are such a sinner. Stop it. Or maybe you have. May I say to you, stop it. It's not your job. It's not your job. Your job is to live your life the way 2 Peter 3.15 says. But sanctify the Lord God first in your life. Then be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that is in you. And do this with gentleness and kindness. That's your job. It's not your job to go out and condemn people. It's not your job. It's not my job. People know their sin, and if they don't, the Holy Spirit will reveal that to them. Our job is to carry on the ministry of helping people find the freedom from their condemnation. That's our job. Some of you may need that freedom in your life. There's a particular sin in your life that that just owns you. You've condemned yourself for it over and over and over Maybe some other people know about it. Maybe nobody else knows about it. And if they knew about it, you would be horrified. You are living under condemnation of that sin. There may be some of you in this room, some that watch this video, some that listen to the CD, that are, are, you are that person. I want you to know that Jesus is ready to set you free from that condemnation. Why? Why? Because God is the God of the future, not of the past. God is not dwelling on your past. He's planning your future. God, has, God is looking beyond to see what He has for you. He's not planning your past. He's planning your future. He's ready to forgive and He's ready to build your future. So what do you need to do? First of all, you confess that sin to him. Acknowledge that it's out of his, out of bounds. You confess that to him. Maybe you've done that over and over and over again. But you confess that to him, and then you do what you have to do to make it right, if you can. It may not be something you can make right. But that's where the freedom comes in. That's where God begins to set us free. Where we do something that can't be corrected. It's like, it's like putting a hole in the wall that can't be fixed. You know, it's, it's, it's done. It's time to move on. And maybe there will be scar tissue, and maybe there will be repercussions for it, and maybe there will be some responsibilities for it. But the point is that God says, I can set you free. We can move on beyond this. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.